everybody. Dale from Tennessee back. I'm going to be canning asparagus today and I thought I'd bring y'all along for that little adventure. I have got 10 pounds of asparagus here. I was very fortunate to find this for 98 cents a pound. That's a really good price. I bought, <clears throat> this was at Sprouts Farmer's Market, 10.12 pounds for 98 cents a pound was $9.92 plus whatever tax. I had also gotten some apples, uh, about two pounds worth of apples, which were also 98 cents a pound. Uh, so the entire bill with tax and everything was $12.81. But I've got to wash all this. This is, I mean, and uh, the young man, when I, when I went in there to get this, they didn't have very much sitting out on the in the display area, and I asked him. I said, "Do you have any more in the back? I'm gonna. I need ten pounds worth." And he goes, "Well, let me go get you a fresh box." And he comes out with, with this huge box. I mean, that's quite a bit of asparagus. Comes out with this huge box and sets the whole thing in my basket. And I'm like, "I think that's gonna be more than ten pounds." He said, "Probably so." He said, "Just take it up to the register and." have them uh, open it up and pull out what you want, weigh it up there, and whatever you don't use, the, they'll send back to me and I'll put it away. So, okay, that's what we did. Um, yeah. Anyway, last year I did about eight pounds and ended up with six one and a half pint jars and one pint jar. So, I still have two jars left. We've eaten on that, and this was last March that I did that, now, almost to the date. So I'm, I'm hoping to get a few more out of that. I've been kind of going sparingly on what we've had since we were down to the last two jars. So now we can go ahead and enjoy those and eat them up, and we'll have plenty more. So we'll see how many I get out of this. Um, I highly recommend for when you're canning, keep notes of how much, how many pounds of stuff you buy and what you ended up with. I'm going to, uh, you know, last year I hot packed them. Um, I'm going to raw pack this year, one, because it is a, just kind of a dreary, blustery, cold day outside. And in order to blanch all these or get them ready for hot pack, I, I would really need to break out my camp stove um, to, because these have to boil for like three minutes. But trying to work with that last year was it, it was like trying to shove wet noodles in a jar and get it to cooperate and it just didn't work too well so I'm gonna go ahead and raw pack this year one because I want to give that a try and see how it does and two it's just too cold outside and it's threatening rain and I'm not gonna not gonna stand outside and, and boil stuff in, in that kind of weather uh, last weekend we had mid 70s I was working in the garden if you've seen that video and now we're back to this. We have a threat of sleet and snow. We're hoping it goes above us and misses us. But uh, we don't like that stuff, so don't enjoy it. But anyway, I'm going to get this washed up and snapped up. And I'll bring you back when I start snapping it so I can kind of show you all how that, that works. And uh, we're going to measure it out for the jars. I've got the jars in washing right now. So we'll have, I have an, a spare one in there so I can kind of help measure but anyway, I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step. Alright, so this is what 10 pounds of asparagus looks like. You can see I've got this in two tubs. One is, uh, oh, what is this? Eight quarts. And I'm not sure what this other one is, but it's a bit bigger dish pan. Um, I just picked these up at Walmart. You can probably pick them at the dollar store. These were those stir lights. Sterilites. They're pretty cheap, but I, I bought white ones to designate strictly for food. I don't do any cleaning stuff with these, only food. So that way I know they're okay. I don't have to worry about, uh, what did I have in here last time? So anyway, according to Ball Blue Book, it wants you to wash your spurs off. So I just ran some water over these, kind of let them soak a little bit. I'm going to start snapping these. Now to snap the asparagus, let me move that out of the way, you just kind of bend it and it's going to break naturally where it needs to because this is the woody part and that's going to be tough. 
them. My dogs love asparagus, so I'm going to toss a few of these to them to eat raw. But for the most part, I'll probably just throw them out and put that over in a bowl so it's nice and safe. So anyway, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to bring you along to snap all of these. I'll just do a few for you. They just automatically just kind of hold the end and bend. It's going to snap where it needs to. And uh, I'm going to set those over in the bowl. And these will go in the garbage. I'll use one of the bags I had out earlier for that. And I'm going to finish doing all these. And then I'm going to wash them again because the ball blue book recommends doing that. And I'll probably put them in the strainer over here to do that this time. Uh, just to make sure they're really good and clean. Because you, know, you don't want to put crudgy stuff in your jars when you're going through this much trouble to, to can stuff. So we'll be back after I get all these done. So it's going to take me a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to tell you all about Charlie. She's in here with me now. She loves asparagus. I don't know if you can see her or not, but she has got, I'm going to throw her one so she'll stay put, kind of. She's got, both of her front paws are shaved, or her legs, it's two spots. She had a little eye surgery, and they've also shaved her little brown eyebrow off. Um, she had a mass in her left eye that they had to remove. We thought it was just a simple cyst, um, but they said it was a little bigger than they thought it was going to be. So they're going to send it off and, and, and check it and make sure it's not cancer. So prayers for Charlie that everything's okay. She seems to be healing nicely. She was a little put out with us <laughs> for taking her to the vet. They, they said she did a lot of singing while she was there, especially after she came out of anesthesia. So, oh, that one kind of got stuck. And here comes Jack. He's sneaking in. He wants some asparagus, too. They, they both just love asparagus. And one of the things I might do with these leftover ends that I'm feeding them as snacks. Okay, one more for you, one little one. Here you go. Is I might go ahead and can them up too and just mark them when they come out of the canner that they're for the dogs. Because I can add that to their food. It's a good healthy treat and it help, <laughs> helps keep their weight down. So I, is it stuck in your teeth, baby? I'm sorry. So anyway, just a little quick, quick break from the, the asparagus to uh, throw that in there and show you Charlie and her surgery and she's really must be yeah really got stuck in it. Okay. Hey Jack. Everybody says hi. So we'll be back. Alright, got all the asparagus double washed and broken down. But now I'm gonna have to fit these to the jars. Because you can see even though it's broke I broke it off. It's way too tall for the jar and that's one of the one one and a half pint jars. So I'm gonna have to trim these to kind of fit. And do something like that because we want to leave an inch head space which is going to be about right in there I'm believing let's see let's measure out an inch and that's about to that, that an inch no, there's an inch there so that's yeah about to that bottom rung right there it even says for freezing fill here but even though we're not freezing, that's still going to be a good spot for it. So I'm going to use this piece of asparagus to measure the rest of them as to how much I need to kind of trim off. And, and I'm not going to throw those bits away. They're, they're still tasty. And we're going to pack these jars and try to get them nice and, nice and tight. So we'll be back when we start doing that and get further along because I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me cut all this. To show you what, right quick, once you have one of these cut to the length that you like and fits in the jar just perfect to kind of save time, it's already pretty short. Uh, just line you up several all at once, use it as a guide, and then just whoop, cut them right off. And that'll get you moving along because you don't want to sit there and try to cut these up one, one at a time, it'll take you forever to get through this much asparagus. I think I'll try this again now that I don't have any more accompaniment uh, with guitars going in the background. Um, I'm going to pack one of these jars. Started out laying it on the sides. I've got all of these cut to about the same length where they should be right at an inch head space. Um, I've got a whole bowl of little trim pieces that I'm going to save. And I mean, I, I may have not have gotten all these perfect, but it's just a whole lot easier to get these things in here the jar on its side and kind of work them in there because you really want to get these packed in here good. Uh, 
like I said last year, I, I hot packed this stuff and it was really like trying to work with what with spaghetti, cooked spaghetti and getting it in a jar. So um, that's getting pretty tight. Um, when when you raw pack you gotta remember that food has air in it and when you heat it up and cook it somewhat um, it, it helps get some of that air out. Let's see if I can find a thin one to go in there. No, I think I may have this one packed. Um, you're getting the, some of the air out of there. So I, I may have some floaties. Okay, that's about right. All right. That's pretty tightly packed in there. Um, anyway, as I started to say, uh, when you raw pack, you're liable to get some stuff floating uh, because the air's still in the vegetables. And it releases in the pressure can. So get this. Okay, I've got it. this is boiling water. I added a teaspoon of salt. Bring this up to an inch headspace. And this really hot water is gonna cause some of the asparagus to contract. And I might be able to fit some more in here, so I'm going to debubble now. Should get one piece. Get in there. Kind of helping me to, yeah, there. See, so pouring that boiling water on there is kind of help. I, I, it's already oop, trying to escape. Contracted some, and I might be able to fit another piece or two in here. Now that I've made a little room and debubbled somewhat, let's see if we can get. Yeah. One more. This is a thin one. It might be able to fit in there. That. That. Oh, that's hot. There we go. So, get everything. Make sure everything's down at an inch headspace. Measure that out. Right, right at. Okay. Come on. Wipe my rim. Ooh, I need to get me some more lids over here in my hot water and turn that down some. Lid ring. Finger tight. And into our camera. There we go. So I'm going to get this finished up. Um, I, may, I may have more than one load. We'll see. <laughs> I decided not to try to run the canner again for another another round. Uh, it's getting too late in the afternoon. And still have too much to do. Still have to cook dinner. But I did steam the uh, leftover asparagus. Sorry, I'm trying to do this by hand now, and it's still on the tripod. Um, so this is what I ended up with steamed. This was the bit that I cut off the stuff that I had already snapped. So it's still good. I blanched it. I'm letting it cool right now and I'm going to put it in the freezer so I can use it for other things. And at the moment, over here, I've got majority of the woody stems right there in the pot. I'm going to boil them up and save them for the dogs because they will enjoy it thoroughly. We are almost down, oh we are down to about 30 seconds on the canner. So we're going to have these done here in just a bit. I'll have to let it vent and get down to zero. Uh, then before I can take the weight off, I have to let the pressure go back down to zero, take the weight off, and then we'll undo the, the clamps and kind of tilt the lid off a little bit and let it cool down for a little bit more, um, just to be on the safe side. So we'll be back when we're ready to do all that. Thanks. Okay, got the lid off the canner. I was going to take the first one out. I've let them sit here for a few minutes because I didn't want them to get uh, shocked. And as I was feared, uh, because I raw packed these, they're kind of floating. Let me see if I can get you up there. I don't want to tilt the jar any. Let's see how much they've risen up off the bottom. Hopefully they'll settle back down. 
Oh, once they cooled off, they should settle some, but that's what I don't like about raw pack. But at least I heard one of them seal. So I'm going to get these over here where they can sit for a little while. And uh, I'll let you know that they all sealed. Here is our finished project product. We've got seven one and a half pint jars of canned asparagus. Uh, they, they've all settled down, so they're not floating so much anymore. I've got one jar that's still a little floaty, but that's okay. Uh, everything's sealed, so I know it's safe. I've still got to wash my jars and mark them and date them. Uh, I've got to put it down, and I've got to start a new, uh, new page for what I can this year. I think I stated at the beginning of this. I try to keep a log of everything I can. I, how, how much, how many pounds of what I've bought, how much finished product I end up with, what method of canning I used on it, and that way I have a record. And it kind of gives me a good idea as we use this throughout the year, how much I need to do the next year. So, um, one thing I wanted to, to say is I'm not a professional canner. I don't teach classes. I just do this because I enjoy it. I like putting food away for my family. Um, but don't just take my word on what you're seeing on my video. Please invest in a reliable canning book like the Ball Blue Book to get your instructions. Don't just rely on videos on YouTube and blogs that people have done as to getting your directions. Make sure they're safe, make sure they're approved and proven methods of preserving your food. Um, I will try to put a link to some of the channels I watch. Linda's Pantry, Two Lilu Preserves, uh, Wilhelm's Kitchen, um, but you also need to remember that they are in different places throughout the country and they may have different uh, pressures and canning times for their altitude so you always need to check that so please please if you're a new canner invest in the ball blue book of canning you can get it at Walmart for under ten dollars if you don't buy any other canning cookbook buy that one so um, anyway thank you for coming along on this experience with me I hope you've learned something I hope I've encouraged you to try your hand at canning it, it's really fun and I think you'll enjoy the enjoy the the outcome uh, as we do so god bless and happy canning